Welcome back, guys. Another episode of the Strong Fit Podcast. We have moved from the roof to the what do they call it here? It would be the is a terrace? Balcony. Is that the European term? No, it's balcony. Ba- I call porch <laughs> the terrace. It's a balcony. It's a porch. I feel no, like that's for hits. I feel like in <laughs> normal English, it's a balcony. It's a stoop. Julian is getting very tired of Kayla and I's like hick bullshit. <laughs> we become much more American when we're around one another. Yeah, all of a sudden, because <laughs> normally we're the Suddenly only Americans in the island, you know. Yeah. And uh, France, France, we're France. going to France. France is not pronounced like pants. No. Pants. That's when I noticed France. it today, that today when I was like, "This needs done." I'm like, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> Tyler is the only one who's gonna understand what I just said. This needs done is a sentence that doesn't make any sense if you like learned the English Should language. Make sense. Yeah. It's like there's nothing here. You totally. didn't say a thing. My Pennsylvania Dutch is really hard <laughs> to understand, so I get it. So we do have some pretty interesting, I would call it uh, news-ish from the CrossFit space. Yeah, right now the fact that a helicopter is hovering not far from us is not. You never see helicopters here. If you guys, if you hear a sound, it's because there's a helicopter <laughs> over there that is hovering around exactly the same area. So you, chances are you're going to hear it the whole podcast. And we might die from whatever terrorist attack is coming that way. Yeah. They don't yeah. really do lots of stuff like this around No, here. so that means we're going to get it for the whole podcast. <laughs> I haven't seen a helicopter here, so. No, no, the really? last time. No, no, actually there was. The last time there was that, that guy who shot the people on the tramway. Uh-huh. And he shut the whole city down. That was the yeah. first time I'd even seen police. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen a, a helicopter like hovering around. So if there's if there's helicopter noise this entire time, you're all just gonna just deal with on it. YouTube for your on the comment section. You can tell us how much you hate the helicopter noises. And we'll and, and so we'll you know we hate them too. We just cannot control yeah. them. So we're gonna then just ignore it and move on. Well, there has been some interesting news out of the CrossFit space. And uh, with the delay in our recording, it's always tricky to be speculating. But, 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 but still. But, but. This so there's going to be Conspiracy Tyler yep. against Conspiracy Kyla yep. against Conspiracy Julian. At this stage, we don't know why the Instagram and Facebook CrossFit has been shut down. So we're going to take guesses and the winner is going to watch or the closest to the, w- to the truth, is, right? <laughs> Who will be the winner? We'll get to watch the other two do uh, all the burpees for time for five minutes. Fuck that me, fucking Invictus burpee workout. What, what, yeah. Whoa! So that means he's yeah, really confident. Uh, yeah. well, no, no, no. He gets to share what their predictions The predictions problem was he had no, no, no. an idea and he was like, Tyler's a fucking moron. We're gonna, we're gonna explain what we think and you out there on the comment section will vote for who won the conspiracy game. And the winner will watch the other two do five minutes of burpee over the box. I'm right. This is a trick. God damn it. All right. All right. So, so do I have to go first? Instagram me was shut down. I mean, <laughs> no user found. Right? Yeah. So um, and, and yeah, so, let's explain what happened. So here, here's what happened. So CrossFit HQ first went down. And so some people are like, oh, maybe it was a hack or, you know what I mean? That, I thought it was. That happens. I've actually seen, I've seen businesses run into that before. Well, Where Microsoft. someone takes over. Yeah. yeah. I even say, you know, I, a guy I know was a equipment manufacturer company. They did this similar thing. All of a sudden, their social media just got jacked, and he had to create a second platform and operate that and try to market it and get his people back as best as he could for, like, a month or two before he got it back. It was a whole yeah. thing. And he had 15,000 followers. Yeah, so, that, so that's kind of a lot yeah. of work, you know? Like, So CrossFit, same thing. You go to it now, it says user not found. That doesn't, we don't know from that whether it's been deactivated or whether yeah, it just has been hacked, it just yeah. says not So found. no CrossFit on Instagram, and then or no CrossFit, CrossFit on, fa- on Facebook, and then no CrossFit games on Instagram yeah. or on Facebook. The, the YouTube channel and CrossFit.com are both Still, operational. Yeah. YouTube posted a really nice recipe for some uh, fucking, I don't remember what it was. Kebabs. Like, lamb kebabs, kebabs, kebabs or something kebabs, yeah. like that. So, uh, so there's Which still- I thought, I thought was a hack. I'm, still, was getting, like, no, 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 no. I'm still getting my daily email. No, but I thought it was a hack. Which I is more when than, they put like the which is more than I got, got when I owned from CrossFit yearly when I owned an, yeah. an affiliate. Yeah. But that's a different story. Um, so, however, now we start getting into to hearsay. Now, a handful of people who I know have spoken to people who know people in the space. Who know people. Which means fucking nothing, I guess, yeah. if that's what we're really getting down to. But the, it, they said that it was deliberate and not a hack. That was the consensus from that. So, and this is piece. where we start. It's not a hack, so therefore, and this is where the game, the conspiracy yes. game starts. Yes. Let's say it's not a hack. Then what is it? Then what is it? I think mine 
it's going to be the most wild one. Because I don't know that I believe this to be the case, but conspiracy Tyler always wants to go <laughs> to the <laughs> thing. Okay. So please, if you hear this out of context, go fuck yourself if you want to throw this in my face. Because <laughs> I'm not going to play this game with you. Yeah. But I will say this much. Let's just pretend that all of this fits the bill. That Because I believe if CrossFit was doing something with their rebranding, that it would be done differently. You wouldn't just remove an account with two or three, with oh, two and a half million people. You don't want to make less money. Well, I know that, but 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 you think that they would say something then about it, or even if they're gonna do any number of things, I just think you would say something, Not or it would turn over quickly. That's that's the wild yeah. card. He is a wild card. <laughs> that he is. But. I look at this and I like to think worst case scenario, everyone's lying to me the most. Like, like that's, how I, that's how I like to look at this. And then we'll, hopefully I won't be disappointed. But what, what I think maybe could have happened, not what is happened, mm -hmm. but what I think could have happened is that what if all of this redirection towards CrossFit Health and uh, cutting all of the media staff from CrossFit HQ and all of it, what if that wasn't, what if that's what you're saying you're doing? But actually, all of these actions of the past six to 12 months is actually a absolute move of financial desperation. But that, yeah, I, like yes. what if for real CrossFit is bankrupt tomorrow? No, I wouldn't go with that. Okay, so that's <laughs> conspiracy. <laughs> that's conspiracy. Now, be, and and I say that simply because sometimes, and it's actually common when a business goes belly up, they can't say that they're in trouble. They really can't say publicly that they're in trouble, that there's any restructuring, because bad news is really bad news yep. in business. So the whole, maybe, the whole thing about shifting the focus and cutting basically f almost half of our expenses with all the media staff and doing all your own media production for all these big events, so, but do you cutting think, regionals. Do you think they were doing it to sell or go uh, IPO? Well, or I, they just took that's, belly that's another side of it too. I think no matter what, they, someone came in, he had a hatchet man No, that, that I believe completely. Yeah, that it's, came in. We're going after the reason. Do yeah. you think they're going to sell or go public or I go think you could either up. go public. Or go belly the up. whole thing could be set up so that they could do an IPO mm -hmm. and go public. Or right. they go belly up. Because they had to trim the fat. Or this whole thing has just been a fucking sham and they've been trying to hang on and it's not going to work another time. All right. So now, I think that's unlikely, but for, like, like the people that say that we didn't go to the moon or the earth is flat, just look into it. <laughs> <laughs> no. We did go to the moon and the earth is not flat. I'm just, I'm sorry, guys. It's wrong. Um, me, I'll go with the fuck. For, so my view of it, why pulling out Instagram? I'm puzzled. I won't lie, I don't understand the... Like he went on an interview, Grassman went interview with Armin, and he had a chance to say, oh, by the way, there are changes coming to our social media. He chose not to do that and just fucking pull Instagram and went, fuck it. I, that one I'm puzzled. Like the Instagram, Facebook, I don't get, especially the CrossFit Games part. If it was just CrossFit HQ, I'd get it. Because yeah. he won't go to World Health. The fact that they also did it to the CrossFit Games, is not a good sign. I don't know what he means, but it's not a good sign. For me, the problem started, uh, I don't think they would go belly up this year, but I think they're fucking broke. I've been saying that, what, like two years ago? Mm -hmm. At the seminar, stuff like that. I think HQ is broke. I think they gave the keys to the Porsche to Dave Castro, who was basically Glassman's kid, who was like, hey, I got money to spend. And then he went fucking nuts on the CrossFit Games. Yeah. And they spent so much money on the games, on the regionals, on the media around. People, I think, underestimate how much that shit is costing them. Now, I don't remember if this was, I don't know if it was in his discussion with Glassman, but I think he referenced a conversation they had that Armin had mentioned, yeah. that I believe everything that the games and the media stuff represented was more than half of HQ's expenses. Yeah. And it was bringing in less than a third of the revenue. Yeah, and, the, and so, the, so the if, red you're, if you're looking at just going in from a business standpoint, and you're looking at this, and you have to maybe take any sort of next step, bringing in external money, where it be an IPO no, or maybe, investors. No, but, okay, so you got to trim the fat because no one's I buying it. I think it's shit. a bit worse than this because I remember when they went through the lawsuit with the CrossFit Kids, they were so people that had knowledge. They were stuff that were starting to come out. Well. There were a few red flags, like Greg Lassman saying that CrossFit is worth $150 million. He said that for four or five years straight. The company goes up or down, but it doesn't stay the same value, mm -hmm. especially as because CrossFit is growing and yet the value was staying the same. So I was like, ooh, that's a bad sign. From what I understand, they were broke then. And then, you know, Dave Castro has the, has the jet and he brings all the competitors from the Home Depot Center to Aromas. 
and I, I think, you know, like you give the keys to the nice car yeah. to your to your son who's not quite ready. <laughs> yeah, I also and I, I think Dave Castro just went nuts on the CrossFit Games, and honestly, it cost it almost broke them. So Glassman went in saying, okay, this has to stop. And he just went with, you know, he took the keys back and went no more fancy cars, pulled the brake and saying, we're doing what we should have done from the beginning. And he kind of brought a, a what alcoholics refers to as a moment of clarity. Yeah. That's from Pulp Fiction. There you <laughs> go. Um, a moment of clarity where he was like, look, we're going the wrong way with this anyway. And I think he created a perfect storm when Glassman was like, fuck it. I'm taking control back of CrossFit and we're going to stop spending uh, the money on the CrossFit Games like it's actually the future of CrossFit. Yeah. And, and so he cut everything. So I'm guessing he's cutting the CrossFit Games, or the social media for that reason. What does that mean? I don't know yet. I, one of the things, if, if you haven't seen this interview, it's uh, Arm & Hammer TV on mm -hmm. YouTube. With him well, see it. It's Arm & Hammer. Yeah, it's, thir it's the closed 30 CrossFit minutes and it's fucking awesome. He right? used to be the naked CrossFitter and now yeah. he's the closed CrossFitter. And, and as a person who, who started in the podcasting space as a fan and ended up in some situations. He's a without a knee. Exactly. Yeah, what podcast, what yes, man. But you end up in some situations where you're in and you're just like, it is so I funny. can't believe I'm fucking sitting here. And you can tell that Armin is having that moment. Armin, who is next to Greg Lassman, is the funniest shit yeah, ever. Because you can tell he's like, how, how did this happen? How did I get here? The only thing I could think of when... Oh, that, so now there's conspiracy kind of oh, coming in. Well... Because you're on record now. First, the only thing I could think of when Julian's like, holy shit. There's no CrossFit Instagram. I tried to get the name. Holy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, there's no CrossFit Games. I'm going to see if I can get it. Yeah. But um, the only thing that I could think of was. CrossFit Games. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Julian said that he was. I think you were reading an article, and he said that it quoted Greg Glassman saying, There are a number of things that I'm just not interested in doing anymore. It was on Almond's interview. And, yeah. And when he said all of this is happening, I saw the, you know, the, the meme of Thanos snapping his fingers. Yeah with Glassman's face and I'm thinking to myself like why not yeah. like there there is no reason for CrossFit to need to exist standalone aside from the CrossFit games if yeah, somebody wants to buy it media. oh so you think they're, they're selling yeah I, the CrossFit games absolutely I could see someone buying oh you think Glassman is selling the CrossFit games yeah and yeah. I think that there's oh a, that's gonna be worth burpee for someone I like it though <laughs> that could make I sense so I could see like it that. you think they sell it to Rogue I, I believe now you've Rogue's involvement in how they're expanding into Strongman, and they're already uh, looking that they're already able okay. to take over the... Okay, I could see uh, that. Why uh, not? Why not? Why not? Why not? After <laughs> Rogue's Invitational. That is timing. Um, I might be... Did you find her? Well, I, that's for marrying her, but I might be doing burpees on that one. Shit, I didn't think about that yeah. one. Of course, the problem is, here's the deal. Hers is the most moderate answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus the they don't like her. Answer. Plus, all the guys on YouTube are going to go, I'm voting for her anyway, I don't care, she's pretty. No. Yeah, um, whatever. Sexism. <laughs> but at the same time, that makes sense. they've it's already... Selling the CrossFit Games. I like it. That makes sense, though. They're outsourcing the specialty courses, right? Yeah. They're already oh, doing yeah, by that. the way, no more specialty. I yeah. believe what we had... Was that an, an so, announcement we saw today? CrossFit, CrossFit Strongman? Gymnastics. Was, yeah. Did that exist before? It was did. It? Fuck yeah, it's Rob Orlando. Come on. Okay. I didn't know, but it didn't. It wasn't long. It was only a no, no. It's still years. on. Is it? It's still on. Yeah, I've seen post of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. terrible job. And Logan that. was on it. <laughs> to me. Yeah, because that's what I thought Logan's yeah. association was. No, he was Rob Orlando, and Logan was his lieutenant okay. basically back then. He's not doing it anymore. Yeah. Logan is not, but Rob Orlando still does some. Interesting. Because mm -hmm. the the contract for Reebok ended, correct? Uh, no. With, with the lawsuit with Reebok, the way I believe that the structure went, they resigned. They basically were they they still are under contract with sponsorship with it, but the game for like CrossFit itself is, mm -hmm. but the games can then be opened up to another sponsor. So be it. I don't know on what day, so but it can't be a shoe manufacturer. It can't be Nike or yeah. Apparel but uh, athletes can wear the clothes they want. Now they can. Yes. Which huh. you might be looking So at. selling it to Rogue. Oh. Here's the problem. We wow. planned this. We had this conversation two hours ago. She didn't say this then. She waited until we're on camera. She totally <laughs> set us up. We got <laughs> set up. I know Fuck how this works. Old, the old bait and switch. I know how yeah. this works. She's like, these guys are bright ideas. But there's no, now there's no correlation with the specialty courses to HQ, right? Mm -hmm. So you just, you say yeah. you're a CrossFit. They fired whatever. everybody on the CrossFit media. The, the certification itself and the affiliate fee would be the only two things that would be really associated with HQ in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then the maintenance of the website it's easy. is pretty, I mean, whatever, yeah. whoever's running so the emails selling working the CrossFit just fine. Games. I, is that that's your prediction? Not, I like that. Uh, I kind of like it now. Shit. 
I thought of that. And if they're selling it, by the way, I, idea. okay, but I'm still right in a way because I still think they're fucking broke. I think that precipitated that. I don't think you. Here, I don't think you make any decision. Um, yeah. That's that's rash. That's uh, it can you can make a values ba based decision, but you don't kind of do it this dramatically unless there's money problems. Let, let's say yeah. uh, Kana is right and the the every three games, step involves. I would like to be a fly on the wall because yes. I think they did it probably fast because they. Oh yeah. They fucking broke. Well, I, I said not barely up, but I said they fucking if, broke. Because if because if I look at this objectively, every step that they're taking, all these affiliate owners out there who are like. If you're the hardline super crossfitters, you want all your people hoping they can go to regionals. If that's your vibe, yeah, going. you're the people who are complaining on the internet because I fucking see it a lot and they're very loud. I don't really but I think they're all wrong in my opinion. It, I just, I just, I, I, I agree with the things that CrossFit's doing from a direction standpoint. No, from a CrossFit perspective, yep. not from a CrossFit Games perspective. Yep. No, no, no. But from just a CrossFit from, perspective. From the so spirit you know, of what, but, 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 but yeah. allow me to finish this real quick, is that if I still look at each step, there's not a step that is taken that has required more money from CrossFit. Every step at this has been a budget slash. Mm -hmm. Every one. Every single step has been, we want less work, less liability, less cost. And so, so no matter what is, it actually is, I still think that while money may not be the cause or the, the root of the problem, say, it is that. exactly still one of the top problems. I would say the money is what resulted in the change being made. Mm -hmm. I think um, they all got complacent with the games, going like, oh, this is going great, let's just keep pushing. I think Dave Castro went fucking nuts on money because it was, an, his, it was his to, to spend, but yeah. not his to earn. And let's and be honest here, gyms are getting smarter, right? Even the best gyms, CrossFit gyms in the country or the world are going uh, I don't know if I want CrossFit in my name because it mm -hmm. takes the normal person away. It turns them away. What? Or you buy the affiliate so that you can use the name, and then two years later you don't re-up because you don't need it anymore. Everyone yeah. knows you're doing CrossFit. One of the things that Glassman said in Armin's interview was that, uh, he's, er, I think it was that interview. I'm going to keep referring back mm -hmm. to it, but I've just seen a lot of shit yeah. lately. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah. is, is, is that these old people who their show... Old, older people who they're showing doing like you know deadlifts with bottles of antifreeze in their yeah, living room in the fake living room and 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 all the hardliners are making fun of it it's like the fact of the matter is they have already gotten plenty of feedback from people who showed that stuff to their parents who are inactive and and having a health initiative requires you to especially in the US it's not just getting people who are training to train better if that was the case our jobs would be really fucking do, do you easy. understand how small of a population this is like yes. guys you are like the hardliners at some point fuck you because we can tell you from the business perspective. Yeah. Can you take that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you both keep on playing with my hair tie. It's <laughs> just here. Yeah. Um, the, like from a business can, standpoint. Yeah, okay, so let you. me tell you something. We have a, the nutrition protocol that works so well on regular people. Like we have an over 90% success rate. It's been amazing. Almost no one gives a shit. If it's not in the trophy community group, no one gives a shit. You know why? Because they're not athletes. But if I had three athletes sponsored by Strong Fit that post on Instagram that show their abs, everybody would be claiming, oh my God, how did you do this? This is genius and all this Whether stuff. Whether they so were doing the protocol or not. They yeah. probably not. We just, I'd be paying them to say they are yeah. and then show their abs. And then even when I put the stuff about Kyla, we basically gain 12 pounds, uh, gaining 1% body fat, but 20 pound, uh, 12 pounds. So that's about, what, 9 pounds of muscle or whatever. Because she's not at the CrossFit Games, no one cares. Well, her results are fucking ridiculous. If I were to do that to any of the girls in the top 15, you all be losing your minds. But we're doing it on a regular basis with over 100 person now over the last few months. And with 90 plus percent awesome results, better sleep, better. And no one outside of us gives a shit. You know why? Because they're not athletes. So all the hardliners that want to just that are losing their shit over the CrossFit Games, fuck you, because who you're talking about is 1%, 1%, 1% of the fitness population. Plus, someone like Matt Fraser, who can do lots okay. of incredible things, though, if, if, if the person who uh, lift an antifreeze bottle, squatting with antifreeze bottles or whatever in their, in their living room, 
they if they see Matt Fraser snatching 315 pounds, that does literally nothing. It's yeah, not even idea. it's yeah. not even if in their world. They see him in the airport, they're not going to know. It's not even in their world. It won't inspire them to do any fitness. If I'm a sedentary Probably person, I yeah. see that, I am turned off from it because it's so far. And so you need to meet people where they are. That's what coaching is. That's what helping people Simple. is. And all we've all they've been doing lately is just blasting about the high end of the shit and it turns people away. L let's do let's use that European strong fit thing as a, as an example to know, to talk uh, to to illustrate that point. You know like the people from Iceland. So well, we're going to give you okay, a scoop yes. that people don't know about. So there you go. So it's going to be out. There are uh, people, a company from Iceland, right, who is using Magnus von uh, Magnussen a, as a front person. And who was it? It's a John Paul Sigmerson's foundation is behind it as well. It's behind it as well. I yeah. think they have a shitload of money, right? And they are going after the name Strong Fit. They're not related to us at all because I have the trademark for Strong Fit in uh, North America, but they are getting it for everywhere else, like in Canada. Actually, not North America. I, I, have Canada, I have it for the US. I have it for the US. So they just bought uh, strongfit.ca for strongfit Canada and they're doing it for Europe as well. Uh, they're not related to us whatsoever, but they just like the name. And we don't have any shit to talk. No. That's they just a, it's a business that has a name that happens they do. It's just yeah. the, my only problem is it's going to be associated with us because of the name. That's my And, it's, and it is also strongman type. Okay. So what they want to do is they want to do functional fitness based on strongman movement. They want to do gyms. They want to do competitions. And so does that sound like CrossFit? Fuck yeah, it does. And so, but um, if I were them, I would look at one problem. You're saying strongman for functional fitness. So that means that you're going to go to women, show after, and yeah. all a bunch of guys weighing 400 pounds or close to 200 kilos, right? Uh, and saying, look, we want you to do what they do. It's a hard sell. Yeah. It's a hard sell to put a girl on a barbell and say, Yeah, Come so now us. you're going to show them a bunch of fat guys lifting thousands of pounds and say, this is good for you. Like, just so you know, when I was having still one-on-one -on -one people to train, I had women coming to me wanting to do stuff to be fixed. And many times they say, but they said no, because, and their argument was, I don't want to look like you. I was like, I'm 105 kilo. Bearded strong men. I hope you don't want to look like me. I I, I'm very, I'm very attractive, but as a woman, I'd be kind of ugly. Yeah, let's I, be honest. I get that, and I'm just like, listen, lady, I don't even want to look like me. Yeah. Okay. Come no, on. No, I want to look like <laughs> me, as, but not as a woman. I would, I would look ugly. Let's be honest. So, right. So, and that's me being in shape. So, imagine showing half tour and a bunch of dudes weighing 200 kilos, right? As an example to women, to what they want to do to get, mm -hmm. to look the way. It's going to be hard, let's put it yeah. this way. And you're doing in competi with competition in gym, which means you're going to go directly against CrossFit. And it's, it's going to be hard for them, let's put it this way. So whenever you hear about Strong Fit Europe, I swear it's not me. Uh, but so pushing CrossFit toward the CrossFit game is the same problem to most people out there, except all of you guys who think you're going to make it to regionals. Um, Pushing Matt Frazier does not work. No, and Most I think people, you, you, you're just stuck into that mindset of, I still want to make it as a pro athlete when really you can't make it to the game. And that gives you a very biased view of what CrossFit is. It's not the CrossFit Games. And, and as, as a person who's owned a couple of businesses in UF as well, yeah. like the thing is, is you don't, I, people start businesses to make money. It's not why I've ever started either of my business. So the yep, thing I is, know. is my business yeah, you know. has always needed to have a purpose because if it's so, my business, it's what I am doing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it, I could never be the person that opens a line of gas stations. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, bless your heart, but if that's yeah. your life work and you can make it, sure. That's just that will never be my thing. And so, so who the fuck are you to tell Greg <laughs> Glassman that his goal, which from the beginning I think was to create yeah. a better, healthier space exactly. and to mobilize inactive Americans and start to present solutions to this huge fucking health crisis we have in the US and in the world, but it is very bad in the US. And it got a little bit far away from it and he's doing what he can to keep true to his own vision. And he and, created and, CrossFit, and guess so what? he gets to then do it. you create something bigger and better and you can blast the super fit people and see if you make enough money to fucking make And by the way, try if you don't want to make a yeah, difference, then just try to make money, money out of competitive athletes. Tell me how that goes. Yeah. Because every single sport I've been into, it's always the same story. Competitive athletes ruin you. They don't help you at all. Jiu-Jitsu, all that stuff, you make no money on competitive athletes. And on the flip side of this, no matter what changes happen, whether mm -hmm. whoever, whichever one of mm -hmm. us is right, there are a lot of people who lost their jobs. For sure. With NHQ. Yep. 
and outside. That so now you're talking about the competitive athlete yeah. who has no platform, the gym owner who has no platform. That's why I'm surprised with the cutting social media. Yeah, so uh, what I'm concerned about is not how this shakes out in that way, but how these people then find their identity. Because mm -hmm. if you told me, if I was still like, I'm gung-ho, I'm going for the games, and you, I saw this happening, I would be shaken. I would be I'm, I'm confused. Su I'm, I'm very confused. I, I'm maybe less than a game athlete, but I'm very confused. Like a lot of those people, that's how they make money. It's like mm -hmm. going home when you're when you hear that your office is making cuts and going home every day, going, "Do I have a job tomorrow?" Yeah. Like he, these people are sitting around waiting, going, "Do I, I, I need to?" I still don't think they're going belly up, but I, I find the cutting Instagram and Facebook. <sighs> when has CrossFit though not ever Here's done what something I hope. dramatic? I hope by the time you see this, there's like there's like it's just this really Stupid. perfect like they sold the solo CrossFit the game. No, I thought you'd be the solo CrossFit <laughs> games to Rogue or some shit like that. Like there's got to be something that I'm just very surprised, honestly. Like Gra Glassman didn't at least hint at it in his Armin interview because that one is gonna freak now, people out. To digress, in Armin's, in, in I talked to Armin a bit about her. We, I messaged him. I don't remember if it was about this either. So I'm the worst with ref, what yeah. I'm referencing. But he said he said the funny thing about interviewing Glassman was this was on his podcast actually, is that like when you ask him a question about something you want to hear him talk about, that's not how Glassman talks. And, and it's actually funny because it reminded me a little bit of the first few episodes we did with Julian where mm -hmm. we were kind of settling in, and it was like I would ask a question and Julian would go. Here's the thing I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and so well, I and usually then, do that anyway. And yeah. so that's exactly the way kind of the interview went with, with Gless was as uh, Armin, Armin would suggest a thing, and then Greg would be like, I'm going to say these words now. <laughs> and But it worked. It, it is basically I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to get out what I need to get out, and you're going to be there to facilitate it. But but that's but that's how it goes. And um, But he's making Armin the official spokesperson of they also, which I find awesome. They also gave... Finally, they gave Hunter McIntyre, or Hunter McIntyre, the the blowhard card for the one of the wild card spots mm -hmm. to get in. And now again, if you're if people that have bitched about that, and there's a lot of people whining, like, why doesn't he just win one of the things? The Cro CrossFit said that they're come making these wild cards to bring in outsiders to yeah. the sport to prove that CrossFit works. And also, Armin pitched to Glassman and some of the game staff about the idea, which sounds like a good idea to me, actually, to use some of these spots to to let the athletes vote. Meaning, any of the athletes who have already qualified for the games can vote for, if you're a male, you can vote for one male. If you're female, you can vote for female. So to let them vote for one person who might get that one male, one female, to get the athletes vote to get in. And when Armin presented that to them, they said, uh, they said, well, no, because these exist to bring in outsiders. So all these people that are bitching, yeah. like, like, well, geez, he doesn't even deserve it. It's like, first off, he does, in my opinion, yes. from what he can do. And, and, but it's like the whole point of this is to bring outside attention, people from outside in, to help people who aren't already okay. in. The goal of CrossFit, like the goal, the goal of the CrossFit Games was to test the CrossFit system. So bringing outsiders that Hunter trains CrossFit, mm -hmm. let's be honest. But anyway, we're going to bring someone who competes outside of CrossFit and trains somewhat as a CrossFit, slightly different, back into it to see if his way of training works to better CrossFit. That is the original statement mm -hmm. of the CrossFit Games. I, remember, I guess some don't remember because I haven't seen it, but I remember on the second game of Aromas when you know, Greg Glassman does an interview with the sunglasses and he's acting like a badass. Which, I don't when know you look I've like him, is awesome. Oh, it's, it's I wasn't awesome. born yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny, honey. <laughs> uh, you're going to do burpees anyway. Uh, um, and he's like, look, then if, you s if you're saying that what you do works better than what we do, commit and prove it. Mm -hmm. And of course, it. Now, I don't think that's a fair test because CrossFit has so many skills that are really CrossFit They've based. They've set their own you definition of fitness. If you haven't trained that way, you won't, you're not going to yeah. win. But if Hunter comes in training slightly differently and does very well on certain things, one athlete doesn't make for empirical evidence. I know your scientist purists are there. Don't worry. I know that. But it says but, something. Well, it's promoting the idea that CrossFit is the ultimate test for fitness, mm -hmm. that it proves on how to train better for something, yeah. which was, again, what the games were supposed to be. So in that aspect, 
And I think it makes sense. And by the way, this is Glassman's thing. He created the stuff. He built a company. He does whatever the fuck he wants. Calm down. Also, it doesn't matter. Just, also, There's going to be 120 people there. It doesn't matter. And, and I think also one thing people are missing is that Hunter's not just some guy who talks a lot of shit. He's a guy who talks a lot of shit. But also, in, if you take last year and this year's Open, of the 11 workouts, he's beat, beat Brent Fakowski on four. Okay, mm -hmm. how many countries in the world? Uh, affiliated with CrossFit? I have no 100? idea. A hundred? hundred something. Right, that means that there's a hundred people from the Open coming mm -hmm. on top of the 20 top plus yeah. the sectional. So there's going to be 150, 160 competitors. But one look, of them, fuck off. But yeah. look at what it does to the competition itself, right? So I think back to you and your tournament, um, your pool tournament. Yeah. It didn't matter who you were playing. Don't care. Every single game yeah. counted. Yeah. And so if you have hundreds of people and you have to place within the top 50, then you have to perform every yeah. single yeah. time. Yeah. So if you're really the fittest person on earth, then you should be able to win or be in that top and, group. And, and, and you know what? Time. You may have all of the tools. You may have built to be stronger. and But if you don't perform when it's required, then you fucking lose. Yeah. That's the way it works. There's a, here's the deal. The NFL, the Super Bowl team winning, is not always the best yeah. right. team every right. year. What it is is they're the team that won the last four games in a row. Yep. That's it. And anything can happen Pink in the middle of a right game. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 sometimes the best team doesn't win. Yep. And it doesn't mean one did anything right on it. He just had a good day on your and he capitalized on some mistakes. Oh, he goes away two, three mistakes. And all of yeah. that all of that can happen. And I think that's I like that part of this competition. I've heard all sorts of rumors that they may set it up to where there's like some elimination after the yes, first couple of days to thin the herd. But again, this is a test of fitness, it's not a build up. It's literally the name of, of, of the game. Yes. It's a test yeah. of fitness, not a build up. You build fitness through CrossFit as a system, and then you test it at the CrossFit game. So bringing out Outside of that trends slightly differently, to me, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Bring some strongmen. <coughs> and I think it's reasonable to... They'll to, die. To, yes. <laughs> to also point out, though, that, funny. like, that the, the term fittest on earth is established. That's established that's by bullshit, CrossFit. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's, that's like bullshit. me saying, like, like I'm going to have a contest decide who's the smartest people on earth. And I'm going to be like, how many, how many numbers am I holding up? <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking yeah. stupid, dude. But you're, you're wrong. You know, <laughs> that to be the smartest man on earth, you have to do a max log. Yes. yes, why not? Let's see. Well, because you have to show that you can. Uh, yeah. Come on. So, yeah. however, I, I, I do like also what they're doing in, inter in the, at the Rogue Invitational. They did it, and I've heard they're going to do really it cool. the games. That was really cool. That was cool. They're going to bring in, they brought in for some, some record breaking attempts for other sports, powerlifting, stuff like that. Not for the athletes well, well, to do, or well, not for the CrossFit yeah. people to do, but it's for the show. And, and it's all, I think it's good for the community because one of the greatest things I think the CrossFit has done is got more people training. And maybe if just doing CrossFit isn't their thing, they found out what their thing is. So it pulls you, like, I do this, I just really prefer the barbell stuff, so they move to Olympic weightlifting yep. or to powerlifting. Oh, there's no question. Strongman. CrossFit has saved Olympic weightlifting. Every person in a weightlifting or powerlifting club will tell you, hands down. 90% of women. That the massive explosion that they've had in the last 10 years is due to CrossFit. Yep. They mentioned it very specifically on the West Side versus the World documentary as well. It's like, now it's raw powerlifting is getting very popular, and it's just because of CrossFit, and and that's good. It which was means they should up. embrace. It was, that. It was building up, yeah. but, but I mean yeah. they should embrace that. If your goal is really to help people, then you can't be. And so I like this inclusion because yeah. there used to be, and I, a lot of people when they first get started with CrossFit, they're like these idiots doing curls like that ain't even functional, and I'm like. Dude, have an uh, awesome biceps. Hard. I don't even care. Like they just That's very functional for women. I'm wasted not. after a bodybuilding session. Like try it one time. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they have <laughs> stop, stop criticizing bodybuilders. You have no idea how hard they should bench, <laughs> bench really pressing hard. or anything like that where it's like it's like, well you you know what's functional? Breeding and procreating and like Get some muscle on you, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to tell you. More lads, less money. <laughs> um, yeah, having lads is functional, too, by the way. But like, I think that has changed. Like, again, like the assistance yeah. work, all that stuff, people start to understand that. So generally, we like the direction we're going. I just don't know what this is. Uh, this year has been rough. Do you know that we haven't, we've seen the, we've seen some of it even from our side. It has, like, the, the seminar and stuff like that. The questions are changing. There is less coaches out there willing to spend the money to come learn from not just us but like a bunch of people so uh, I've seen the we have different people coming to the seminar it's been very interesting we have about the same number but they're not the same crowd that they used to be and I have a lot less gun ho fucking like oh that's what we need to do the I have a lot less 
hard-headed people coming to seminars. They're coming to learn now, but there's a lot less like just make me better at snatching. And that might the be the crowd has changed. Yeah, and and I think that might be a combination of I think. There's little things that have come down from them. I mean, these are these are big things coming down from the top of voice yeah. of moderation and balance and yeah. a more holistic approach. But I think generally the some of the little things you see, uh, a lot of the hardline barbell only people, like you know, when I opened my CrossFit affiliate, people the other affiliate across town shit all over us for having sandbags. Yeah. And it's like we just use them sometimes yeah. and emphasize some other things for structure. And I would hear you know, murmurs when they're trying to sell to my clients over there, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, like they don't even do CrossFit over there. All they do is Strongman. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no, even but no. now, finally, you know, Rogue is carries the strong fit sandbags. You start seeing the, the sandbags at yeah, the games. You start, yeah. It's like because this is part of what just training is. Yeah. And training is whatever it is that you do to build the system you need to get better. And that starts to come in, and now these people that were like, well, I just want to do, I just want to cycle fucking power snatches and do butterfly but that, pull-ups. That, that actually, my, my biggest problem with with those people is I think they misunderstand what CrossFit needs to do. They, they never knew me. what it was. They never knew what it was and they never knew what was good for it. One of the reasons um, a lot of the good guys joined CrossFit at first was because Glassman was so charismatic and before it, they all got glass assassinated. Uh, they they saw a is that a word that you just invented? <laughs> yeah. The best yeah. You don't know that word? Ever. Did you invent that word? No. Oh, okay. It's been around forever. No, I thought assassination. I thought that's you when he fired like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, that's just brilliant. I thought you just came up with now. <laughs> No, I, know, I thought that I was like, been you around. Got, no, it's like, been around. You gotta prep me before you. He's, he's, he's <laughs> okay. got glass of Yeah, he's, he's been around for a while. Um, uh, they all came in because they saw an open source that could challenge the system and build a better one, right? So to do that, I like where where they're going, which means we, they need to take off just the pure Olympic weightlifting and all that stuff. Come back and we redesign the system in a more inclusive way. Because mm -hmm. now we know better than when we started CrossFit, where they thought. Olympic weightlifting was the best way to get strong because of the technique. Explosiveness requires mobility. The technicity of the, things, yeah. of the, and then realize now that it's not enough. You have to have assistance work. You have to have the strongman stuff. And, and so now we can redo cross. You have to know how to work with people. Yeah. Well, that's okay though. <laughs> like, that's another, <laughs> instead of having problem, to, yeah. to worry about the implement or the, yeah. the way that we're doing it, you can focus on like what is best for the human being walking in my door right now. And the I'll, system hasn't changed I since have, he started. I think it's time to go around and redo the system. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting anecdote too about how I think the, the system as people in, being just really married to the way things that were, how this ends up. Okay, you try to force your own athletes through the same system then. Yep. You know what I mean? You're, you're pushing through. I have a friend who was one of the reasons I started doing CrossFit. He and I were both always big guys, big college football player. We both got a little hefty into our late 20s, early 30s. Uh, he started getting a little healthier outside of CrossFit. And he lost a ton of weight. And I got to the point where I was really fat. And I was like, and then he kept hassling me. He's like, think about starting CrossFit. You want to start? And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't do skinny fat. But then he <laughs> said he was going to start. And I was like, well, first off, I can't have him looking better than me. This isn't going to happen because he's always been a little bigger than me, so I cannot allow this. Fine. So I did it. And, and all of it worked really well. And I lost all that, all that progressed mm -hmm. me to this point. But here's what happened to him. And this is the piece that, that gets missed. Training, traditionally, still overweight. Hadn't worked out a lot of the issues. But things were going well. Weight's dropping. Overhead squats. All the things. Snatching all the shit. All of a sudden disc injury yeah. in the thoracic due to overhead squats, which is rare and extremely difficult to yeah. do. That leads off this progression that ends, goes from constant pain, yeah. chronic pain that goes on, then gets into heavy drinking, yeah. opioid addiction, rehab, risk of losing your job, and consist and now sits at a pretty unhealthy weight consistently. Mm -hmm. Back worse probably than when he started. And, and for someone that I got in to help people who are like me, and that whole thing, it's like, all right, you need to understand that that's not what that person needed to be doing at that time. And, and, and to be the coach that's like fucking overhead squats and power, it's like, well, no, like, look at the person, you the not, person. Yeah. And so when I see these people that are bitching about the new approach, it's like the new approach is caring about fucking people, not the barbell in the games and, and professional the athletes approach. and, and, and professional the athletes who these people and the coaches who yeah. are defending all this shit have never fucking met in their life. Yeah. Well, and I didn't you know? tell you you can't do that anymore. 
right? They, no. You can still snatch as heavy as you want, never add squat as much as you want, but it, they're just trying to tell you that the expectation shouldn't be that every human being has to do that in order to be healthy. Th that was my problem at the time, is the idea is that in order to be healthy, you have to do overhead squat. And I was like, <laughs> guys, that, that's a fucking pie dream. That is yeah. not a box everyone has to check no, no, in their lifetime. But, but plus, that's, that's also that's not how you get better. No, right. but that's looking for squat. a pill. <laughs> like, it, like that's, that's looking for a pill saying, if you can manage an overhead squat, then all the work into it will get you healthy. That's not true. And all that's people, they're going to kill them, kill themselves to do an overhead squat and still have a mountain of uh, uh, deficiencies on yeah. the side. And now shoulder pain. <laughs> and now, and now that <laughs> yeah. starts expanding is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, and that's a piece that for, for, for me made a lot of sense to me because at that time I was still very new in it. I wasn't too doing based. any coaching, it was very, but it was it's very outcome based way and, outcome and based. all I can think is, is why. And, and, and so you know what it is with pain, with chronic yeah. pain, is, is in my head I'm like just, just come back and then when I opened my gym, you know, yeah. years later I was, I was like just come back, like just do, we need to get you doing something, but that pain it changes you. Years of chronic pain changes you. It, it breaks your soul into pieces. Like yeah. it does some gnarly stuff. Like yeah. if you have not worked with uh, people in chronic pain, you don't understand what it does to a human being. That that's actually one of the stuff who makes you realize that as a coach you need to evolve. Yes. Is when you deal with because you don't realize how fucked up their life is. Like that yeah. that it crushes the human soul to a degree that is disturbing to watch. And you see people come in and you can tell that it has that like their entire day is going to be determined on how that what's the status of that chronic pain is right now yeah and by the way it's and by the like, way as a coach is it, is it a zero is it a ten it's it is, is it a it six or a seven or eight or nine that's and, and, and also as a coach there is a point too because some they then start to get in their own way yep. often and they're afraid of Confidence setbacks is very low. Get, as soon as they yeah. get progress they jump too far and then the setback whether it's their fault it's or not, sweet times as hell. It's still a part of the process too, yep. especially with backs. And 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 that setback is going to They'll some freak people out. never bounce back. They'll freak out. And you have to set that expectation. I say in the beginning, I'm like, listen, this is it's going to get better until it doesn't, and then we're going to keep getting better until and we're going <coughs> to hope that the the net is positive. Yeah. And that's all we can really do. And and and, and in the end, we'll get you there. But yes, it will feel better some days, and then the next day it's going to feel worse. Yep. And that doesn't mean the whole thing's not working. But, but that's the approach with the people I like to see them take, and I like this direction that so CrossFit's going. So human beings, basically. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I hope they, they don't let go of the social media completely because, they, st they still again like we've seen that ourselves. Like if you just help regular people it's very hard to bring the product out. Most people will follow you only if you train athletes or people that look good. So, uh, how, how do you choose where to place your priorities in that regard then? Like with what so we do here, because... So I have a plan, which means uh, making Kyla win powerlifting co competition <laughs> in a bikini while looking awesome. That's really my <laughs> plan. Maybe not the bikini, but anyway. Well, they, uh, they do. They, wait, don't they have like the one, weightlifters have like the onesie yeah. singlets now? No, Is that not, not your thing? She's not doing it. <laughs> uh, so uh, first yeah. of all, the athletes have uh, the goal of making her win uh, powerlifting, especially in Europe, and killing everybody because she benches 100 kilos, so she yeah. will destroy powerlifting competition. Anyway, so that's one plan, and I might get one or two athletes back and then help them dealing with their own shit and do better just so, so that we can push the message a bit forward mm -hmm. because I can tell that if I keep just helping regular people it won't progress it won't get the message out there enough that's what's hard is it I think it is important to get to do what you need to do to get the message out and yeah. that's why I think you whatever, whatever it is they're doing here the social media stuff's coming back in some form or another it just yeah. has to well I, I, well I really hope so there's a huge power behind watching someone excel in yeah. one thing I, like, yeah. I can't begin to tell you how it sounds really cheesy but watching Julian play pool and get better because mm -hmm. of all of the time he's investing in it right. and all of the things that he's trying and table, messing yeah. up or then trying and succeeding like just watching him from one tournament to the next and going oh like that's a that's different that's person like, yeah. playing and so I can see why that's important for other people to to see that journey and go oh yeah because if you do work your ass off, you can kind of get somewhere. The day after I, I beat the, that ex Dutch champion, mm -hmm. right? that's when we had the conversation. Carla was like, I want to get really good at powerlifting. 
like, all right, I like it. Good. Because yeah. I went from a tournament where I sucked to one where I played really well. She was like, oh, so that's what hard work does. Yes, yeah. crazy. I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> being re <laughs> relentless and when being good at one thing. A and then if you master that one and you want to do something else, cool. But yeah. like, but be stop relentless in the meantime. Yeah, stop saying, I want to get better at this. So, but uh, as Gala said, you ha that message has to be delivered. It has to be shown. Yeah. So. I have always a problem showcasing myself. I guess we could do it more just to show that I c what I've learned on strong men or jiu-jitsu, I can apply to pool and make it work just as well. Because strong fit is a way of learning, mm -hmm. not a system. So you can apply it to music. You can apply it to pool. You can apply it to sport, to whatever you want. That's what interests me. They still have to prove it. So I still need athletes or musicians or pool players to prove that the system works. Yeah. So in that sense, I might <coughs> have to go fish for another couple of athletes. There'll be Kyla on one side for the powerlifting. Yeah. She can do Olympic lifting as well, especially she'll kill everybody here. And then I might go fish for one or two crossfitters to say, hey, remember us, it still mm -hmm. works. It's interesting, like, Maybe. because I, I, my whole thing in this side of everything that I've done and in getting involved in the fitness industry is more for the things that CrossFit is doing now. Yep. The really sedentary people growing up in the Midwest, that is, that is yep. the norm, not the exception. And so my challenges do not, never came from, oh, how do I get this elite athlete a little more eliter? <laughs> like, like no, my, my, ch my challenge is, how do I get this person who's coming and starting to, to just not quit on themselves. For sure, but weeks. people need and to know about your gym. So, for exactly. example, Exactly, so at some point there is a balance that has to If be you have a gym and then you help regular people, you actually could do, you could make it work because in your town, you'll be known that the people that they know, yeah. especially in a small town, have lost 30 pounds with you. So that your best advertisement yeah. as a gym owner is regular people. Yeah. For us, as a business that is basically a specialty, we need a few assets. And what's harder though, so for a gym owner, I, I agree with that fully. Yeah. As a gym owner, you need to just promote a, a, everything with the normal people. With normal people. That's your bread and butter. Us, That's it's what a keeps little bit on. different. But this, the problem is, is even like yeah. you said, we probably need to have some more, that's the fucking word I hate the most, but like, you know, influence type people who are gonna jump on the thing and then have it work for them because that goes very far. But remember, as you're seeing the content out of the fitness space on the internet, that that is what that stuff is. And the, a That's lot of people that are out there who are famous and promoting stuff. a thing, that doesn't mean that thing is awesome all the time. It yeah. doesn't mean it's bad either. And that's not really why we're doing it. Like people have to understand, my soul is not into training CrossFit Games athletes anymore. Like I used to. Uh, by the way, I've always trained regular people. The mistake that I made was only uh, showcasing the top athletes because I was fucking broke and I wanted my business to work. Yeah. Um, but my soul has always been mostly toward regular people. And I had a few friends, people that I knew that I liked, that I wanted to help, and they happened to be good CrossFit athletes. But you have to understand that most of the time when we show that stuff is to sell something. Yeah. It's to, hey, look, I'm, all, I'm awesome, I'm amazing. I made that guy do the work. Bullshit, I didn't do shit. He yeah. did all the work. Right. I, I, I was in the back trying to make sure they didn't break. And it's hard because it's we've, not me. It's we've, not even, we've even done it with like testimonials from people within our nutrition groups where these are people who all of a sudden now are sleeping better than they ever have and they feel better and they're training better, they're getting leaner, everything is lining up. And you present that. And you won't believe any of it. Not only that, the first question people would think is like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, who's your it? fucking neighbor? That's like, those are care? the people no, you, you should be yeah. here for. It's exactly. Like, oh. But none of you care. Yeah. Like, it will look like an infomercial. You won't believe any yeah. of it. You will think we pay those people and actually they pay us and you won't care. And the yeah. truth of the matter is, working with those competitive athletes, what I've learned anyway, is I spend more of my time sitting there trying to help them off of the ledge than I do really <laughs> training them in the first yeah. place. Is that true? Because they're yeah. already motivated. They're already doing the work. They need a little bit of direction to steer them off of mm -hmm. going overboard, but they're going to do the stuff. Yeah. What you're selling is their passion and commitment to being better yeah. and, and my, their face with your product is that. And, and my, hang nice up, my hang up always becomes in those situations is a lot of the things that they want aren't good for them you know it's it's like oh, i'm just gonna fucking just sell myself out completely to skid yep. into competition season because it's all i fucking got you know and and you see that and as a coach i don't coach this this is the thing is i don't coach the competing athlete i coach that person and that yep. doesn't fucking fly. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna watch you like try to rip your goddamn shoulder off because you got a third attempt at a meet, I'm that like, I'm that. like yeah. we got. It's, you know, that's why like, we, we all we, we we're not here to get good right now. Like I know this is important to you, 
but you're gonna fucking regret this. Yeah. And and you just watch people run into that stuff over and, and over again. It seems like people have no those types of people have no clue what it's like after once once they get that they're fucked up enough or they just lose the passion mm -hmm. for that sport because that's what happens. Uh, what's life is post <coughs> post that. <coughs> Your life is going to suck. Once your shoulder hurts every day, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. Your back blows up. You have disc issues. Uh, and most likely you're 28. Oh, man, your life is going to suck. Yeah, it's not an easy hole to dig out of. Yeah, I can't. I, <clears throat> fortunately, I'm so old that everything hurts all the time, and I'm just, it's normal now. Now, now, now if I were to fall apart, like, no, fuck it, Tyler. It's kicking. Kick no, but the idea dead. that life finishes <laughs> at 35. Uh, is absurd. Like, you guys have no idea. And now here, perfect example of at what, like, at what cost, right? So you do all of this to your body, you train yourself through the mill, and then mm -hmm. and your, okay, your sport is over. By the way, okay, but so, so people understand what we're talking about. I am redoing, I'm basically creating a new career. I decided to get good at pool. I was playing for fun, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to compete. Yeah, that's my normal behavior. But <laughs> I'm going to compete, and I'm going to try to turn pro. Well, mm -hmm. it's only be the fourth sport, fifth, yeah. by now. Why not, right? Is yeah. it the fourth or fifth sport I'm trying to turn pro at? Anyway. Four, five, four. Right? Four, right? Yeah, because they were strong men. Yeah, yeah. So that's my fourth sport trying to be a pro at. Um, but the only reason I can do that is because I'm not broken to the point where I can't play pool anymore. But you have to understand, I'm someone who did uh, a thousand pound yoke carry who had a 400 pound stone uh, lift who like I lifted heavy heavy shit on my back every single week for five years straight I got good at strongman national level if not international is that I was very good at what I was doing but I did it in a way that allows me now at 45 to try to become pro at playing pool because at some point you will be 45 and you will Maybe CrossFit is gone, but maybe something else will come about. How about if you try to compete in bodybuilding at the age of 50? Well, that not? might actually happen. Here's a, I'd be I might that. actually do that. That's not I a bad idea. Be. Speaking of, hold on, how old is Matt Clark? Do you know? 52. He's like in his 50, yeah. 50 right? I'm a, uh, Matt, Matt's going to watch this. Yeah. Okay, but speaking of being bodybuilder at 50, Matt, I've known Matt now for a couple of years, I think, with, with the stuff we've done here. And he's a generally pretty fit guy. Yeah. Matt's out of uh, Michigan, I believe. And uh, yes. Michigan or Wisconsin, I think. No, no, Michigan. Michigan. And uh, anyway, generally fit, CrossFit guy. I've been around. I do, I'm do. i not going to use the term old guy to describe him because he's, he's not. not. Yeah. But, uh, but, but we had, he's in our mentoring program. And all of a sudden, Matt has a video of, it was, a, we had to ask for some homework, and it was a video of thing, but it was the first time I'd ever seen Matt with his shirt off, and we're fitness people. Yeah. Like, like, the shirts being off is just the way things <laughs> are. And so, and I, and I saw this, and I was like, if I, at 50, was that fucking jacked. <laughs> and lean. Yeah, like super lean. I'm like, you could not pay me enough money to keep my shirt on. <laughs> so, so yeah, body. If, you, if you're going to body, at f like, yeah. most of the people who train, what's their main thing that bothers them, though, is, Oh, I, I, I don't look that good. Even the people who are yeah. performance yeah. people get really bent out of shape if they're not mm -hmm. lean and jacked enough. Yeah. Dude, if at 50, they look like fucking Matt, dude, I would okay. totally so get on stage. How about for all of you out there, we make that as a life goal. By 55, at 55 years old, you have to compete in bodybuilding. Yeah. It'll force you to train a certain way. Just keep your shit together. Okay. Like Until then, you're going to have to have enough muscle. You can't get too fat. You mm -hmm. can't get broken because you can't train anymore. Your motivation has to be there. Your passion for life has to, you still have to have the competitive juice. Yeah. That's a goal for you. Yeah, because most people say, like, I can't wait until I'm 60 or 70 and I can just wear whatever I want and look at, like, <laughs> not give no, a shit. No, not a I'm going to, I have a hot young wife. <laughs> I'm going to look good at 60, guys. Trust me, I'm telling you. Um, but, yeah, like, you know what? For the 55, I'm competing in bodybuilding. There I, it is. I, I remember talking to people I'll be about pro. It. I'll be a pro bodybuilder. I'll be my, my fifth, fifth small six. Coaching some people who, who, who want to get, get, get bigger, like, then really be gain size, not just yeah. get stronger, yeah. but just to gain size. And, and it was like, well, how'd you get big? I was like, here's the deal. I got fat. <laughs> I, I got, well, I got really fat, and then I lost a lot of weight first, though. So I was I was a lean-ish, skinny fat. I mean, I'm six foot six, so it was like 287. Yeah. And then I did just strength, almost no conditioning, and put on a lot of weight. Got to about after three years, got up to about 345, big, but added a lot of fat. Yeah. Um, and then 
now over the last You're nine, now, ten yeah. months, yeah. been gradually getting leaner, and and so now I'm down to about ten pounds heavier than I was when I was just doing CrossFit and being just lean and not strong and not having a lot of muscle, mm -hmm. and and but. So that idea of recomping, yeah. oh, I gain a little bit of muscle, but I don't want to get fat. I'm like, yeah, just take yeah. three years, yeah. get uncomfortably large at the expense of the way you feel all your the health. time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, take 10 years off your life to do that. Yes. <laughs> and then gradually get leaner so that you're going to be about the same size and you'll just look a little bit better. <laughs> it's kind of how that fucking works if you want to go fast. Fast, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, oh, yeah. I could, what I could have done was just gradually done things the right way and with in moderation. And by the way, and the probably injuries slow you now. down. Like, people that want to go fast, I got news for you. Injuries slow you down. It can cost yeah. you years. Yes, and by the way, when they slow you down, they just slow, don't slow you down um, physically. They, so, they slow you down hormonally speaking because your nervous system is shot because you fucking burn out so badly. Mentally, you lost passion. You don't want to train anymore. You hate yourself. You Maybe you fell into drugs or some shit you shouldn't take. By the way, if you take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen a day, you're on drugs. Yeah, just because it's not getting you high. No, just because it's that's legal. That's a problem. <laughs> just because it's legal doesn't yeah. mean you're not, basically. <coughs> if you take painkillers to train, you're a fucking drug addict. Yeah. Uh, or you're really addicted to training. And <laughs> both of those things are probably yeah. not. No, a drug addict. And that's part honest. of the reason I think we focus so much on in the training group, especially. Like, we're not moving on at all until you all know why the hell you're doing what you're that's doing That's the anyway. big thing. Okay. What the fuck do you want? That's what the question. What do you want? And why do you mm -hmm. want it? Yeah, so the two questions, the three questions people cannot answer is how do you feel, what do you want, and why do you want it? And like, can you answer those three questions on a daily basis? There's a challenge for you guys. And be real answer, and be honest. Answer the how, the what, and the why every day to yourself in front of the mirror. And how do you feel, what do you want, and why do you want it? And that's those not are not easy and answers that's, to. And this, that's not even the hard essential question of. Who are you? Yeah, we'll get to let's that not go later. There. Let's we'll not find go that there. out yeah. later. I just wonder what the fuck you want us to help you with, and and believe, and but the people that come out the other side of that, yeah. like and know, then things just start to go. I mean, it moves. Then they get then it, it moves but forward. But the for number that. of people ask us about their squat and yet have panic attacks every time they train, is amazingly large. That's what I've discovered over time. And if you have a panic attack every time you train, we need to fix that. It's yeah. not your squat. It's not Why your on panic. earth do you care that. about squatting 500 yeah. pounds? Why aren't you yeah. concerned about these panic attacks? Yeah, you got a car that goes <laughs> fast and no brakes. If you're too. fucking <laughs> depressed all the time, if you can't handle stress anymore, if any stress just sends you off or burns you out, you, there, there are issues we need to fix. We need to talk about it. Yeah. We need to express it. We need to fix it. We need. That's what we're in there for as coaches is to help the human side yes. the whole like putting 20 pounds on your squat man i can do that i can, oh my God, I can do that yeah. so fast yeah it's so it's not that complicated <coughs> if i fix the human by the way you'll squat 50 pounds more anyway yeah let me just fix the human you everything will go up instead of just your squat so and that kind of ties us back into all the things that we've seen up to crossfit before this drop off Seems to That's align why with the I got things interested in CrossFit That's in why the you've first been place. Because I've never, I was never on the, interested in competing in CrossFit. I have no intention of doing Olympic weightlifting. I don't like it. I like strongmen, but I had a, I would say, a passion for CrossFit from the beginning. Just from not from the competitive perspective, it was the training system. I remember it the early sense. videos of Greg Glassman yeah. talking. I was like, I like that guy. Yes, he's fucking drunk and he looks like he needs a, a hot meal and a shower, but. The dude is awesome. Yeah. Like he, he was charismatic. He that's who we missed. I, Dave Castro with the cornrows and all that shit. He's, that's he's no other problem. Um, Greg Lassman, the beginning in those videos, I, like, I understand exactly what he's saying. And we say we need to measure fitness. We need to understand what it is first. And I was like, why is no one else asking those questions? Mm -hmm. He made such good points. That's why I'm happy to see him back. I yeah. hope he's not destroying Instagram. But I. This is what CrossFit was supposed to be, is taking care of humans. And if competition truly is the opposite of health, then it has no place in CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. And what now, so now well, in, in, yeah. in his exact words, what, what Glassman had said recently was, 
but we still do want to maintain the tip of the spear. He's like, that's not going to go away. We always want these athletes out there, these top athletes. They need to exist, they need to compete, and they need to push. Because they need to prove that the system works. we know yep. it works, and yeah. we start to know what's possible. Because yep. if you look at, true as well. look at the games from 2008, I'll give that to Dave 2009, Castro. that shit's embarrassing. Yeah. But Dave Castro pushed these people like to he Dave was Castro. willing to fucking yep. kill them. Yep. And it worked. Uh, that's and true. they all adapted. And it was all great power for to those Dave people. He all power to him on that one. And like any system. <laughs> he proved... Uh, he proved that women could do stuff we had no idea. Never. Yeah. The only one who believed that was Dave Castro. Yeah. I, I didn't think especially they on the women's side they could do now, what they do now. I don't even. People will ask me questions about certain female power. Do like, you think that person's on drugs? And I will say I have no idea what women are actually capable of naturally anymore. Especially volume. Not a yeah. fucking clue. volume wise. The amount of volume women can do once you push them, at the expense of certain things. That's another problem. But. Um, the, the physical capacity of women has been shown to be much greater than we thought, and Dave Castro is a huge part of it. And, and that trickles down, which is why it's important that that you know, I'm, I th he believes this and I believe this that that remain as a testing ground. Yeah, and it should. If you get to that level, you should be able to prove yourself against this. Totally, but it has to be proven. Change in the world is not done with that alone. There's yeah. a time and place for testing. Yeah, I really like the idea of rogue buying the CrossFit Games. Thank you. That is a I fucking good idea. That, oh. that Rogue, if you listen to this, if you have anybody working on Rogue, listen, please <laughs> give it to the boss and tell him to buy the cross again. I think that's an awesome idea. Because they've been doing a really good job with strong men and all that stuff. And they've been taking over, getting their hands <coughs> on, Sorry. creating new implements and, and all the stuff. So. They're an inclusive opportunity. No, they're doing a good job. Like mm -hmm. what they did for strong men lately. Yeah. And they sponsor all those women, strong men. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. So that's probably, if I had to guess, the most feasible I think outcome. she wins most likely but we'll see we'll see and of course I come with the uh, it's all about the money and we've been lied to the whole time so he's going to actually all my favorite conspiracies fall into that he's, he's going with IPO going public she's going with rogue I'm going uh, IPO or bankruptcy or bankruptcy um, she was like the uh, rogue is buying the CrossFit games uh, glass money selling me I was like I was going a little bit less than him fucking broke about to die <laughs> if they don't basically Cut Shape off Castro up. from Shaking the, the cup for change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they're not stopping Castro from spending that is money. As and and to wrap up, I, I think too, like I like that CrossFit was founded and as a business owner, very uh, from a business side, very libertarian and conservative principles and you can do your thing, make your business your way. And the business was founded yeah. without excess. And now I see you see what the game is. It becomes oh, this well, really man. celebration of the success. stories I've heard about early CrossFit. I like mean, as in, I, don't know I mean, as in from an affiliate standpoint. I've, I have stories. <laughs> I will never be able to tell you guys, but I, I know mean, a lot of people from the early CrossFit years. Oh I shit! I mean, if you separate from HQ, what what is meant to be handed down to the affiliates? never get me in front of a lawyer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what for the longest time for, uh, at the ground level, the the, the affiliates no, 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 I, was very celebrated. That you do what you can do to help your people. Yeah, but even that and, was. And, but when you start seeing a that lot was of this a problem shit, too, because quality control is an issue yes. within the affiliation yeah. of CrossFit. They, they, sure. they are certain problem that I bet you, if they can actually sell the games to Rogue, then they'll have the time to focus on the real issue, which is quality control and coaching and all that shit that they really need to tackle. And by the way, the training system has not changed in the last 15 years, 12 years. Like, we need to go at that. Yeah. That, you know what? We, we need to circle back and redo the training system. That should be the next step. And, and I hope that's what Grassman has in mind. It needs to be flipped on its head either. It needs to be looked at. No, so think just about it. Redo it. Yeah. Like, n not change it from the ground up. Just let's make it better. Mm -hmm. Right? The, the shed the fat. Yeah. Trim some parts. Redo the, the stuff. Because now we Shift know that. Shift some ratios around. Right. We know Learned. that Olympic yeah. weightlifting yeah. and wall balls is not enough. We need assistance work. We need strong men. There's a bunch of stuff we need, which you start to see a little bit. I, want, I would like last month to redo the, the, the system better. Yeah. And then we can go at the affiliation, quality control, and all that stuff, which if they don't have the games, they could actually have the time to do. The money. And here, if, here's, and here's if this catcher is not spending that is money, maybe they can put the money the where it belongs. The first thing that I thought when they cut the, the media staff and were done paying to produce all the game stuff themselves, as a former affiliate owner, the first thing that I thought was, well, that's going to free up a lot of money, which would work really, really well if you wanted to do some quality control, which yeah. means you could have regional representatives that can come in and literally just come and hang out in your gym and talk to you, build a relationship. You know the guy who fucking, say, delivers your coffee to if you have a restaurant or whatever? That guy's job isn't to come in and get you to buy more coffee. 
His job is to come in and have you like him so that you keep buying coffee from yep. him. And he can help you with whatever it is, idea, all these other things, because he's in the industry. I think CrossFit would do great if you had access to just a person to talk to from time to time. Fucking A. I don't need a answer Christmas question. card typed. I need to answer, two I weeks need answer to some questions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what if you just do need help? In, in from a business standpoint, they can't. They, they don't even have any resources personally that you can get to, and and I just think that they they can start to give people better direction and equip them better off to actually help people instead of slapping try. a sticker on it and calling it. That's what it was always. Yeah. It. it was always a bumper sticker to me. Mm -hmm. Is the way it worked, and it was one I valued enough but to they, do. They grew so fast, so I, that's why I think the, the, this will be positive as long as they don't go belly up. Yeah. And fucking let go of social media because that, that would be that yeah. would be a weird. What if Coca Cola bought them out? Oh, that'd be so, just to shut them down. Oh, that'd be, that's <laughs> conspiracy, <laughs> Tyler. That's more like it. That's right. Now, that's now we're getting on. into it. The, yeah, the, fucking Rothschilds come in and the, the Federal Reserve and the, the you know flat Earths and this. yeah, like the Illuminatis are coming <laughs> over and they can cross it. All right. Uh, well, we, we, we better wrap up before I I'm lose gonna go play pool the rest again, of my credit. I have my brand new table and I do plan on using it to shit lot. That's right. The and table Carla is better. getting her head slightly better, which I like a lot. Uh, she's getting the piercing on the eyebrow. Hi, mom. <laughs> and uh, she do, I'm winning this. Nice. And I'm going to go play on my nice, awesome pool table with fucking tight pockets. Yeah. So until next week, uh, you can check us out at youtube.com forward slash strong fit. If you're listening, that's where you can watch. Uh, Move all the kilos. That shirt is available strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu. Uh, shirts aren't in Australia, are they? Just the they are, they are. They are, they are. okay. Those something. are also available at Manta Fitness if you're in Australia, as well as sandbags at those, so. all those equipment sites. Just get him in trouble. Well, yeah. if not, he'll yeah. ask now. All their shirts, <laughs> Men, all their some shirts. And then, uh, what else do we have? Uh, StrongFit1 on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. by the way, My double, Instagram is still up. I double checked, by the way. There's two O's. You told me there was one O. I have okay. no idea what my handle is. Don't so, follow So, me. it is OK32. <laughs> uh, and very soon, we will take over the Instagram CrossFit. So you'll see strong face <laughs> race. And I'm, I'm still looking to get the name. I'm just saying. I'm Tyler F. And so, quick update. I did look into the original strong fit name now. Yeah. That account is zero followers, zero posts, no, zero blocked. activity. You're blocked. No, no, no. It won't even show up if I'm blocked. Oh, really? Yeah. So Trust she, me, she I've took been it down. blocked. <laughs> but but she took so it down. She took it down, but it's it? still, I don't know. I don't know. Who do you Can contact? I get it? If anyone knows. Okay, let's How go back to the podcast somebody. podcast day. We need help a strong us fit help name. You. Help yes. me help you. Yeah. <laughs> so we need a strong somebody. fit name. Let's yeah. let's someone let's figure this out. So she's not using it. And that, so I even looked into Instagram new, new, al new algorithm for uh, because they were going through removing inactive accounts. They did a big batch. Yes. And but they but that one didn't get scooped up in it. There's nowhere to report an I inactive want strong account. Fit. I want an Armstrong fit. Yeah, it'd be sweet. Maybe it's your mine. European strong man friends bought it or totally. asked her. Don't tell them about <laughs> this. Our secret. <laughs> they totally Maybe we should have talked about this off air. Why did I come up with this <laughs> right now? They have enough money <laughs> to totally buy out. Because she's from Norway. They're from Iceland. I bet you they could contact her. And yeah, they would scared. buy it from her because they have a shitload of I'm money. I'm just full that. of good ideas today. I yeah. should do something. You are. We should actually have, I I I <laughs> we should actually have <laughs> ideas that help us instead of us. <laughs> <laughs> that is true as well. Yeah. Consulting but is my next Don't forget gig. the piercing. Yes. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I think that's all the plugs we needed right out of Yeah, what else? Next one. <laughs> See you guys.